Hello everyone, artist Charles Wolf here. Hope you're having a fantastic day today. Let's get right to this painting. I have my Stay Wet palette all ready to go. I've taken some water and put it right into the center of that palette. It looks a little bit messy to be sure, but I have um, dabbed it off with some paper towel. And so what you're seeing is mostly stained and not actual pigmentation. I've taken some water and added it to my yellow ochre there at the top left. I'm using a mid-size bright brush for this, and I'm using very broad horizontal strokes, very light and loose, just putting some warm color into that sky pretty quickly. You can see that I've switched my technique from using the flat part of the brush, but using the actual edge of it to create some sharper punctuations in these clouds. I've just started getting into watercolor painting. I'm really enjoying it, and I hope that you are enjoying seeing these videos. I've already released this particular painting as a time lapse last week, so today I'm sharing with you all the full length version and the real time version of me painting this piece. bit more of the yellow ochre. Take your time. There's no rush. You have plenty of time. I'm going to grab some ultramarine blue, a touch of the Payne's Gray. That's the Payne's Gray at the top right. My palette is as follows. Top left is the yellow ochre. Next to that is the bright red. Next to that in the right hand corner is a big mess of Payne's Gray. There next to it you'll see some purple, and that's a mixture of the cobalt blue and some bright red. Below all of that is the burnt umber. Going over I have some burnt sienna, and then all the way to the left you have on the bottom some alizarin crimson, and right above that is a bit of the lemon yellow. Those are the colors I will be using today. Same technique, sort of using the side of the brush to make a nice point. Good amount of water so the pigmentation does run a little bit but not so much water that it's dripping down the page so there you have the juxtaposition of the darker blue against the yellow and i think it looks quite nice very simple background to do very easy sky but pretty effective i think i can take some more water add it to the yellow ochre when I started this painting, I was thinking I was going to leave a lot of the white with just a bit of the ochre as a lake. I ended up not doing that, as you can see from the opening shot of the video, but I am putting down some yellow ochre on the bottom, which warms it up quite nicely. Just a little bit, not too much. Now I paint in acrylics, oil paints, and in now watercolors, and I find that watercolors are uniquely challenging. They require you to build up texture, build up color, and intensity of color through layers, something that's fairly unique to watercolors as far as I've seen. And you really have to be careful because if you put something in the wrong spot, it's kind of tricky to fix. If you make a mistake, it's not terribly forgiving. So. Take your time with this. Don't feel like you have to uh, make it perfect by any means, but try not to make it too exact either. So it's kind of a combination of trying not to be overly precise or overly exacting with what you're doing. Keep it loose, keep it relaxed, and just kind of go with it. You can't control it to the degree in which you can control, say, acrylic paint or oil paint where you can get precisely where you want it. This moves about a bit more. And so it's a little bit trickier to make sure that it's exactly where you want it to go. It may move a little to the left or go a little bit higher than you want. And you can't cover it up because if you cover it up, it just intensifies the area. So work slowly but deliberately, 
Try not to overthink it at the same time, and just have fun with it. If you make a mistake, it's not the end of the world. Keep your brush moving, and try not to add too much water. Some artists like to do wet and wet. That's something I have to experiment more with. Um, I'm just adding a little bit of water to my colors and putting it right onto a dry paper for the most part. And it seems to be working well for me. Adding some more of the Ultra Marine Blue to my mixture of Lemon Yellow, Burnt Umber, and Blue already. It adds a deeper intensity to the green that is already on the paper. Just creating a simple line of trees here. It's nice to put in some of the lighter green first and then put the darker over top of it. It's a classic technique of watercolor. Put your lights in first and then come in with some darks. That way as it dries you will see that the lighter areas become sort of highlights to the counterpoint of the darker parts. Grabbing some burnt sienna with a little bit of lemon yellow, ultramarine blue, and a bit of the burnt umber, I am making sort of a fall foliage color. Mixing that until it looks about the color I want, adding a little bit of blue to it, a bit of green. There, that's looking a lot better. All right, I'm gonna go up here and add in a large tree, right about there. Corner of that bright brush. I don't want it to be too complete. I want it to be a little bit hollow in the center and not have all of the white and the colors behind it covered up, but just using the corner of the brush, moving quickly sort of coming down to a smaller point down below. Creating sort of a hill line here. Once I finish with this tree. I'm going to make a line of bushes kind of going out to the right here, getting smaller. Adding some depth and dimensionality to this. Because the tree is closer to me, I need to make sure that it's bigger on the paper. You can see that compared to those distant trees, which have more blue in them, due to the atmosphere between you and those trees, which makes things look a little bit bluer, you'll notice that this tree is about twice as big as those distant ones, and that's on purpose. I want this tree at the front to really stand out, so we make it a lot bigger, and it will look more correct as far as the perspective goes. If you keep it about the same size, you can't tell that it's closer to you. Taking my hair dryer, I'm going to blow this off. More correctly, my wife's hair dryer. I did borrow it. As you can see, I've already got some paint on it from other projects. Hashtag living with an artist. And that probably means that I need to buy another one. And officially claim this one as my painting hair dryer. Taking some more of that brown mixture of the yellow ochre plus lemon yellow plus ultramarine blue and burnt umber, my green mix, with a bit more of the yellow ochre in it. Note that in this mixture I am emphasizing the ultramarine blue and the yellow ochre over the other colors. I really want a nice green, autumn green color. Very warm green. Almost brown. Lots of water here, creating a nice wash. Need a bit more pigmentation there for it to really show up. So I'm going to have to go back and add some more as I go along. But for the first layer, we want to keep it nice and light. Again, err on the side of caution. Use less pigment where you can, and then go back and add a bit more in layers. Taking some of the burnt umber, I'm going to intensify the color a little bit, bring out more of the brown. And I'm just tapping, sort of dabbing very loosely creating some nice textures with the edge of my bright brush. You can see how it creates some wonderful textures by just tapping it very quickly.
Gonna do a quick wash here with my yellow ochre using the side of the brush. Just putting some color down there. Back to my green mix. A little bit more of the blue in it, a bit more water, more of the yellow. I'm dragging it horizontally, tapping as I go, filling in some of the details back here of this field, breaking it up a bit. Need a bit more blue. I'm going to grab that. I want to fill in this tree line a little bit better in that corner there. Taking some more of the yellow ochre, some water in it. Going to add another wash here underneath this tree, a bit more water, filling in this foreground area. Going back to that burnt umber, I'm going to start playing with this hillside here. Just straight burnt umber, tapping again, creating some nice lines here, adding some texture. Fairly dry brush, not adding a lot of water to it. Grab some more of the ultramarine and a little bit more of the lemon yellow, make a nice green color, pretty intense. It's a little bit darker as well. I'm going to start playing this back into that farther field and bringing in some green. You can see how much darker it suddenly becomes. So you have to be careful with the balances. You can lose the delicate nature. I don't think I've gone too far here, but you have to be conscious of the amount of pigmentation that you're adding and be aware of the amount of water to pigment that you're using. I am using professional grade watercolor paints. These are artist quality paints. They have a fantastic color. They're very rich. And while in other mediums like acrylic and oil painting, you can possibly get away with slightly less quality paints, um, particularly in acrylic painting. Oil painting, I still try to use professional when I can as much as possible. But I find that for watercolors, the blending and the mixture and the pigmentations and the way that they interact with one another really need to be of a quality so that they will combine correctly. If you try to use student grade or sort of the kindergarten version of watercolor paints, they are not going to have the right color mixtures. They're not going to look correct. It's not going to look natural. It's going to look very artificial and it may not blend correctly and it may not keep its color very well when you blend the pigments together. So I highly recommend if you're going to try watercolors out, that you do invest a little bit of money at least into getting some decent paints for watercolor. Again, other mediums, maybe not so much, but for this, you definitely want the quality that comes with professional grade watercolor paints. Getting some more of that green, a bit more yellow to it, a bit more of the blue going back and forth. Get some nice little details here at the front. For watercolors, a lot of it is just getting the shape and the composition down first. You can always go back later and add in more details like I'm going to and I will show you with a rigger brush, a smaller brush, like a liner brush. And you can go back with that and add all kinds of little twigs and sticks and tree limbs and, and things of that nature. And it looks fantastic. It looks really great. some contrast and some darker shadows to some of these bushes here on this hill. Watercolors, so when you first put the paint on it's very intense and it will dry much lighter. 
I know that even though I'm putting fairly dark color there, it will get lighter. I've gone back and I've added some of the green mix to the distant trees. I want to bring them into better focus and create some layers way back there. A bit more water with the green mix. Gonna blend this out a little bit. Continuing to put some more of the little details in as we go. I'm going to switch to my rigger here. Burnt sienna plus some burnt umber. Maybe a touch of that Payne's gray as well. But mostly the burnt sienna and burnt umber. You can see my face there. I'm actually watching and looking over at my palette. I'm sort of sitting next to the camera here. I'm trying not to block it as best I can. It's a little awkward at times to do these painting videos because I'm trying to not get in the way of my camera. And I wanted to be sure to put it far enough back so that you could see the palette in all my mixing when I'm doing this. Because a lot of the watercolors, the magic happens on the palette. And so it's important to see that. Okay, I'm going to take my rigger brush and put it in just a few faint indications of tree limbs. They turned out really well and I'm really happy with them. Took a bit of that Payne's Gray there and added it to the tree trunks to add definition to them. There, it's much darker now. You can really see that it's starting to take shape. Fantastic. A little stick there, a little twig here, poking out of these bushes. Using short, quick strokes, we're going to give the indication of grass. Again, adding depth to our picture. Back to my bright brush, just for a moment here, filling in the bottom of this with the ochre and umber. filling in that space. I had missed it on the first pass. Back to my rigger. A bit more of the burnt umber. I know it's a little bit hard to see all those little indications from this distance, but at the very end of this painting video, you will see the final painting, and in that you can definitely see how they add a very nice effect to the painting. I think I subdue them quite a little bit by going over with another wash of the paint using the bright brush. I didn't want them to be too prominent, but the little strokes are still implied and still there to a certain extent, and it really pulls the whole thing together, I think. Just nice to add a little bit of detail sometimes. If you watch my channel or subscribed, I Thank you so much for doing so, and think about subscribing if you haven't subscribed already, but for those of you who watch my channel know that I like to be more impressionistic and a little bit more abstract with my art. I don't tend to do a lot of detail work, so this is kind of fun for me, uh, playing around with this very small brush and putting in these little details and notes of things. Okay, back to the lemon yellow and blue, back to that green mix, a bit more of the blue there. Again, intensifying that color. That blue is a strong blue, so... You only need a little bit to really make it pop.
taking that blue mix, going to better define this front hill. Felt like it needed a bit more pronunciation. Just the tip of that fairly large bright brush. You can get some very subtle, very small effects with it if you just use the very corner of it. A few strokes here. Now this may look a little bit too blue and I will let you know that it does dry a bit darker and I'm adding some more lemon yellow here to diffuse the intensity of that blue. Back to my rigger, burnt sienna and umber. Doing some lines here on this hillside. Just a few faint lines can really add a nice effect. Some sticks sticking up here. I think I decide not to go so heavy with the stick. I think I stop here in a second and decide to erase that. You can do so with a little bit of dabbing with a paper towel when you first do it, but that's about it. If you don't like the way it turns out, you can kind of get away with it, but you have to do it right away. If you pause and think about it too much, you will not be able to remove it. Actually, it works out because it helps me transfer this green further back into the painting, and I think that it pulls the thing together a bit better than it was before. When I didn't have the green in the background and only on this front hill. All right, well, that's about it. Be sure to check out my art blog, Impulsive Artistry, at impulsiveartistry.blogspot.com. What do you think about this painting? Did you like it? Would you like to see more like it? Let me know in the comments below. Also, consider liking and subscribing to this channel. Thanks so much. Mm -hmm.